Thank you very much, Minister, and thank you all for being here this morning. Um, I was particularly delighted to hear you say that the National Early Years Strategy is near draft stage and that there will be consultation around that draft strategy. Um, we very much welcome that and, and very much appreciate that because it, it is beyond time that we had a public debate on how we value our young children and their care and their early learning. The quality of early care and education is extremely variable. There are some excellent services and then there are some who fail to meet minimum standards. And we know that not only is it that high quality benefits children, but that poor quality can harm children. And in the meantime, we estimate that there are about 50,000 young children cared for by child minors who work without regulation and without support. And while the recent Child Care Act was amended to take an awful lot of changes into account, the vast majority of which we welcomed, child minders weren't included in those, those amendments or those uh, brought within the regulatory system. Our government invests what is a very welcome amount, but also a pitifully low amount by international standards in early care and education, and public funding goes to services, not necessarily with any regard to quality. And at the same time, parents in Ireland pay some of the highest childcare costs in the world without any guarantee of quality to go with those high costs. Those parents often face an all or nothing choice to work full time or to leave paid employment entirely because they can't afford to work. And some parents return to work sooner or work longer than they would like because they can't afford to take unpaid leave. <coughs> Children spend long hours in services and their parents are working to pay their childcare costs. And yet, we're talking about having a high quality service. Service providers are expected to run an educational service while also being entrepreneurs, running a financially viable business. And many services, and you'll hear from um, Toby later on today in terms of the interviews we conducted with a whole range of services, many services just aren't financially viable and they have no prospect of being so. Many services uh, make little or no profit. And then on the other hand, some services are big businesses and make significant profits and often supported by public funding in doing so. Community services are often in a precarious financial situation. While they're working with families living in poverty, they're still expected to operate within a business model and as Helen referred to earlier in the terms of private services, making the books balance. So what we're talking about today in terms of childcare markets, it's not exclusive to private services. An awful lot of those challenges also apply to community services. Staff and services are on low wages. Many paid an hourly rate just above the minimum wage. Training and CPD are often at their own expense. And there's often no reward for getting a higher qualification. A minimum qualification, uh, thankfully a minimum qualification requirement is now being introduced and we very much welcome that. However, it's a basic requirement and we need to be moving towards graduate-led provision. Our, <laughs> our inspections process focuses on health and safety issues. Another very recent welcome development is that there will shortly be new education-focused inspections. But it's not clear how they'll relate to the existing inspection process or how, whether they're going to work with services for under threes. And it's far from ideal that those two processes are separate and that it's another layer going in. Uh, we do very much welcome that there is an education focus, but it's, it's not ideal. And none of this adds up to high quality early care and education as a public good. Yet despite that, there are some really good services providing high quality early care and education. But none of this suggests as a nation we cherish our young children. And that's why we're putting our hope in the early years strategy, that it will outline this blueprint to move us uh, towards that so that no parent has to wonder, is this a high quality service, that all services will be high quality services. And I think it's useful at times to contrast how we regard our children's early education with their later school education. We're proud of the quality of our school education system. Schools are valued for the opportunities they offer children, for their contribution to society. And while they're never funded sufficiently, and I know schools all have their own challenges, 
our government does invest significantly in our school education. And again, sorry, I know I keep banging against something here and there's feedback coming through the mics. Um, we do invest significantly in their education. We do very much welcome that there have been no cutbacks, and I think it is an achievement that there haven't been cutbacks in early care and education. Yet it was in the, con the context of huge cutbacks having been introduced prior to this government. And it's welcome that there haven't been cutbacks, but neither has there been a huge increase in expenditure yet. And that's what we need to be looking forward to. All children are entitled to a primary education and parents aren't required to pay for it. Much less are they expected to pay the market value of that primary education. School principals are evaluated on their management and leadership. They don't have to show that business acumen that early years provided are expected to have. Teachers are required to be graduates. They're paid a salary. They're paid a salary, not an hourly rate, and for that, they're expected to teach, plan their classroom time, engage in CPD, engage with parents, and whole school evaluations focus on the quality of the teaching and the learning, as well as the management and planning. For far too long, we've regarded early care and education as minding children, and we've seen it as enabling their parents to go to work. And yet, as we heard from the minister, that this is the very the very grounding of children's education is starting the journey on, on lifelong learning and we need to ensure that that's what we're putting in place. Today, this conference and the report that we're publishing that all of you have, have got in your packs, we're seeking to explore how we build on that positive legacy that we have, that combination of private and community provision and child minding and how we move towards a new model of early year services. We build on what we have and move towards having that high quality early education system. We're not talking about a business model, but a profession in which public investment allows early years educators to deliver a public service, a public service focused on quality, which is also accessible and affordable to families. One that puts children's interests first and shows how we place value on our young children's early care and education. And as Tony mentioned, we, we took the theme of the conference from what the Taoiseach uh, said in response to the prime time, that, that prime time broadcast of breach of trust. <coughs> and it's about moving from what we have onwards. And Helen has spoken uh, from the international evidence about what governments can and should need to be doing. If we're, what actions uh, do we need to be taking to, to ensure that we move towards that. And we're delighted that Helen was able to share her research earlier on this morning, and also that Noreen later on today, Professor Noreen Hayes will be talking about uh, Helen's research and putting it more into an Irish context. And Toby will also be speaking about the research that Start Strong produced looking to that. Because we need to be moving towards that high quality service. The expert advisory group rightly pointed out that the key issue is addressing quality. We need to address affordability, we need to, to address access, we need to address quality as the key issue and to link those in. We need to be looking at the cost to services, families, and making sure that public funding, things like the free preschool year, are built on to ensure that provision is affordable and also high quality. Because at the moment, the high cost of early year services can keep families living in poverty because people can't afford to go to work. So we need to be addressing that. We also need to be making sure that there are high quality services across the board so that child minders are part of this. Uh, we need to make sure that they're a key part of this new model that we're looking at, both in terms of regulation and support. And we also be need to be looking at our family leave provision. The family leave bill will be coming up um, early in the new year, and it needs to look at support for parents and children uh, in their own homes, that parents who want and need to take longer leave entitlements can do so, who want to need flexible work can do so, so they can achieve that, that balance that we all strive towards between work and real life, uh, so that we can have that work-life balance, and that they can spend more time with their children. We can only do this if we're serious about the reform and that we're moving towards ensuring we have much stronger public involvement, that we've reformed robust legislation, regulation, inspections, 
a much higher level of public investment and a professionalised workforce. Just as our national school system is largely privately owned, but in effect publicly provided, we need to be moving towards that uh, within our early year services. We will continue with the mix of private and community providers, but who are nonetheless in themselves delivering that public service. And in a way, that's already happened. We're not talking about something hugely radical here. That's already happened to the provision of the free preschool year. What we're talking about is building on that, funding it properly and appropriately so it can provide uh, that early education. And I suppose just to be clear, we're not talking about schoolifying early years. We're not saying we should be delivering a school system through early years provision. We're t talking about ensuring that that high quality provision can be there. Early years care and education, it's, in many ways it's that first stage of the education system. So it needs to be treated like that and the educators working within it need to be treated as professionals. They need to have the qualifications, wages, working conditions, career development pathways and the public esteem that goes with having a profession. Only then will we see that children's early care and education <coughs> is valued as the foundation of their learning. Your report that you have today outlines a number of recommendations that we are making in Start Strong as to how to move towards that. I'm very conscious of time, and I did say that I would shorten the speech um, to enable the Minister to move on to his, his next meeting and also to have a couple of minutes with yourselves. So I'm not going to go through those recommendations in detail. Um, we should have the opportunity to do that later today. But very briefly, um, in terms of what we're talking about at a general level, we're talking about a new model of early year services for our young children that uses public funding as a lever to improve quality, that brings with it that greater public investment, that we move from our current 0.2% uh, that we invest at the moment towards that OECD average of 0.7% and then on towards that 1% of GDP of expenditure because we need that level of public investment. I know we're broke as a country, we can't afford anything, there are other countries that are broke that can afford it and are able to do it. It's a matter of prioritising our young children. In return for that public investment, we need to make sure that public funding is conditional on quality. Um, we can't have a situation where public funding is going to fund poor quality services. And we've made a number of recommendations to ensure that this new model is focused on quality and it's around things like um, early years inspectorate moving progressively towards graduate led provision <laughs> with it that that would mean salary scales, the regulation and support of childminders, having national supports for quality, a regular quality audit and I think that's one of the first things, one of the first specifics we need to be starting with and then to be gradually moving towards the introduction of ceilings and fees and thereby maintaining that uh, this new model is accessible and affordable to all families. And again, we're talking about progressing towards the second free preschool year, opening up public funding schemes to all services, so that there isn't a division between community services and private services, and neither is that distinction with childminders, that uh, childminders who are regulated and inspected and meet those standards can also participate in them, that there's thereby ensuring access to quality services, and that local structures meet local needs so that we, ha we don't have a position where one community has a load of great services and a couple of miles down the road there are no services and parents have to travel for an hour before they can access the service. We need to be ensuring that local <coughs> structures ensure that those local needs are met. So that's a whistle-stop tour of our recommendations. We very much welcome, and I do um, realise that I sound like I've been very critical of everything here this morning. I don't mean that at all. We have had progress over the past few years. There have been very, very welcome developments, particularly in terms of uh, recent amendments to legislation and the new education-focused inspectors. That's what we need to be building on so that this becomes a profession and our young children are valued and their early education is set firmly there on their path to education throughout their lives. Thank you very much. Um,